Amnesia, Wikipedia article audio. Amnesia is a deficit in memory caused by brain damage, disease, or psychological trauma. Amnesia can also be caused temporarily by the use of various sedatives and hypnotic drugs. The memory can be either wholly or partially lost due to the extent of damage that was caused. There are two main types of amnesia, retrograde amnesia and anterograde amnesia. Retrograde amnesia is the inability to retrieve information that was acquired before a particular date, usually the date of an accident or operation. In some cases the memory loss can extend back decades, while in others the person may lose only a few months of memory. Anterograde amnesia is the inability to transfer new information from the short-term store into the long-term store. People with this type of amnesia cannot remember things for long periods of time. These two types are not mutually exclusive, both can occur simultaneously. Case studies also show that amnesia is typically associated with damage to the medial temporal lobe. In addition, specific areas of the hippocampus are involved with memory. Research has also shown that when areas of the diencephalon are damaged, amnesia can occur. Recent studies have shown a correlation between deficiency of RBAP48 protein and memory loss. Scientists were able to find that mice with damaged memory have a lower level of RBAP48 protein compared to normal, healthy mice. In people suffering with amnesia, the ability to recall immediate information is still retained, and they may still be able to form new memories. However, a severe reduction in the ability to learn new material and retrieve old information can be observed. Patients can learn new procedural knowledge. In addition, priming can assist amnesiacs in the learning of fresh non-declarative knowledge. Amnesic patients also retain substantial intellectual, linguistic, and social skill despite profound impairments in the ability to recall specific information encountered in prior learning episodes. The term is from Greek, meaning forgetfulness, from dash, meaning without, and mu nu sigma iota, meaning memory. Presentation Acquisition of New Memories Patients with amnesia can learn new information, particularly non-declarative knowledge. However, some patients with dense anterograde amnesia do not remember the episodes during which they learned or observed the information previously. Some patients with anterograde amnesia can still acquire some semantic information, even though it might be more difficult and might remain rather unrelated to more general knowledge. H.M. could accurately draw a floor plan of the home in which he lived after surgery, even though he had not lived there in years. The reason patients could not form new episodic memories is likely because the CA1 region of the hippocampus was a lesion, and thus the hippocampus could not make connections to the cortex. After an ischemic episode following surgery, an MRI of patient RB showed his hippocampus to be intact except for a specific lesion restricted to the CA1 pyramidal cells. Some retrograde and anterograde amnesics are capable of non-declarative memory, including implicit learning and procedural learning. For example, some patients show improvement on the pseudorandom sequences experiment as healthy people do. Therefore, procedural learning can proceed independently of the brain system required for declarative memory. According to fMRI studies, the acquisition of procedural memories activates the basal ganglia, the premotor cortex and the supplementary motor area regions which are not normally associated with the formation of declarative memories. 
This type of dissociation between declarative and procedural memory can also be found in patients with diencephalic amnesia such as Korsakoff's syndrome. Another example demonstrated by some patients, such as KC and HM, who have medial temporal damage and anterograde amnesia, still have perceptual priming. Those patients did well in the word fragment completion test. There are three generalized categories in which amnesia could be acquired by a person. The three categories are head trauma, traumatic events, or physical deficiencies. The majority of amnesia and related memory issues derive from the first two categories as these are more common and the third could be considered a subcategory of the first. Amongst specific causes of amnesia are the following. Declarative information Many forms of amnesia fix themselves without being treated. However, there are a few ways to cope with memory loss if that is not the case. One of these ways is cognitive or occupational therapy. In therapy, amnesiacs will develop the memory skills they have and try to regain some they have lost by finding which techniques help retrieve memories or create new retrieval paths. This may also include strategies for organizing information to remember it more easily and for improving understanding of lengthy conversation. Another coping mechanism is taking advantage of technological assistance such as a personal digital device to keep track of day-to-day -day tasks. Reminders can be set up for appointments, when to take medications, birthdays, and other important events. Many pictures can also be stored to help amnesiacs remember names of friends, family, and co-workers. Notebooks, wall calendars, pill reminders, and photographs of people and places are low-tech memory aids that can help as well. Non-declarative information While there are no medications available to treat amnesia, underlying medical conditions can be treated to improve memory. Such conditions include but are not limited to low thyroid function, liver, or kidney disease stroke, depression, bipolar disorder and blood clots in the brain. Wernick-Korsakoff syndrome involves a lack of thiamine and replacing this vitamin by consuming thiamine-rich foods such as whole grain cereals, legumes, nuts, lean pork, and yeast. Treating alcoholism and preventing alcohol and illicit drug use can prevent further damage, but in most cases will not recover lost memory. Although improvements occur when patients receive certain treatments, there is still no actual cure remedy for amnesia so far. To what extent the patient recovers and how long the amnesia will continue depends on the type and severity of the lesion. French psychologist Theodore Armand Ribot was among the first scientists to study amnesia. He proposed Ribot's law which states that there is a time gradient in retrograde amnesia. The law follows a logical progression of memory loss due to disease. First, a patient loses the recent memories, then personal memories, and finally intellectual memories. He implied that the most recent memories were lost first. Causes Case studies have played a large role in the discovery of amnesia and the parts of the brain that were affected. The studies gave important insight into how amnesia affects the brain. The studies also gave scientists the resources into improving their knowledge about amnesia and insight into a cure or prevention. There are several extremely important case studies, Henry Mollison, R.B., and G.D. Diagnosis Henry Mollison, formerly known as H.M., changed the way people thought of memory. The case was first reported in a paper by William Beecher Scoville and Brenda Milner in 1957. He was a patient who suffered from severe epilepsy attributed to a bicycle accident at the age of nine. 
physicians were unable to control his seizures with drugs, so the neurosurgeon Scoville tried a new approach involving brain surgery. He removed his medial temporal lobe bilaterally by doing a temporal lobectomy. His epilepsy did improve, but Malaysen lost the ability to form new long-term memories. He exhibited normal short-term memory ability. If he was given a list of words, he would forget them in about a minute's time. In fact, he would forget that he was even given a list in the first place. Once Malaysen stopped thinking about the lists he was unable to recall them again from long-term memory. This gave researchers evidence that short-term and long-term memory are in fact two different processes. Even though he forgot about the lists, he was still able to learn things through his implicit memory. The psychologists would ask him to draw something on a piece of paper, but to look at the paper using a mirror. Though he could never remember ever doing that task, he would improve after doing it over and over again. This showed the psychologists that he was learning and remembering things unconsciously. Types Studies were completed consistently throughout Malaysan's lifetime to discover more about amnesia. Researchers did a 14-year follow-up study on Malaysan. They studied him for a period of two weeks to learn more about his amnesia. After 14 years, Malaysan still could not recall things that had happened since his surgery. However, he could still remember things that had happened prior to the operation. Researchers also found that, when asked, Malaysan could answer questions about national or international events but he could not remember his own personal memories. After his death Malaysan donated his brain to science, where they were able to discover the areas of the brain that had the lesions which caused his amnesia. This case study provided important insight to the areas of the brain that are affected in anterograde amnesia, as well as how amnesia works. Patient R.B. was a normally functioning man until the age of 52. At age 50, he had been diagnosed with angina and had surgery for heart problems on two occasions. After an ischemic episode that was caused from a heart bypass surgery, R.B. demonstrated a loss of anterograde memory, but almost no loss of retrograde memory, with the exception of a couple of years before his surgery and presented no sign of any other cognitive impairment. It wasn't until after his death that researchers had the chance to examine his brain, when they found his lesions were restricted to the CA1 portion of the hippocampus. This case study led to important research involving the role of the hippocampus and the function of memory. Treatment Patient G.D. was a white male born in 1940 who served in the Navy. He was diagnosed with chronic renal failure and received hemodialysis treatment for the rest of his life. In 1983, he went to the hospital for elective parathyroidectomy. He also had a left thyroid lobectomy because of the severe loss of blood in his left lobe. He began having cardiac problems as a result of the surgery and became very agitated. Even five days after being released from the hospital he was unable to remember what had happened to him. Aside from memory impairment, none of his other cognitive processes seemed to be affected. He did not want to be involved in much research, but through memory tests he took with doctors, they were able to ascertain that his memory problems were present for the next 9.5 years until his death. After he died, his brain was donated to science, photographed, and preserved for future study. Amnesiacs History Henry Mollison Head trauma is a very broad range as it deals with any kind of injury or active action toward the brain which might cause amnesia. 
Retrograde and anterograde amnesia is more often seen from events like this. An exact example of a cause of the two would be electroshock therapy, which would cause both briefly for the receiving patient. Traumatic events are more subjective. What is traumatic is dependent on what the person finds to be traumatic. Regardless, a traumatic event is an event where something so distressing occurs that the mind chooses to forget rather than deal with the stress. A common example of amnesia that is caused by traumatic events is dissociative amnesia, which occurs when the person forgets an event that has deeply disturbed them. An example would be a person forgetting a fatal and graphic car accident involving their loved ones. Physical deficiencies are different from head trauma because physical deficiencies lean more toward passive physical issues. Electroconvulsive therapy in which seizures are electrically induced in patients for therapeutic effect can have acute effects including both retrograde and anterograde amnesia. Alcohol can both cause blackouts and have deleterious effects on memory formation. Patient RB Patient GD Benjamin Kyle, Clive Waring, Doug Bruce, KC, Scott Balzan, Sywaldskid.